Hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to this live edition of The Green Room. We're live from Experience in Denver, Colorado. So excited to be here uh, today, joined by my special guest, Bridget McAdoo, who is Genesis Chief Sustainability Officer. So really exciting week for Genesis. We're live at Experience. Uh, sustainability is a huge focus of this event. Uh, tons of activity around community, around giving back, around environmental sustainability, and around diversity, equity, and inclusion. So really thrilled that you're here, Bridget. Uh, so it's the green room. Um, this is the space for the big hitters in CX. Uh, which uh, Bridget is clearly one. And we like to learn something a little bit personal about our guests and bring them their special item that makes them feel really comfortable. So Bridget actually requested an item that I've never heard from before, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. So I'll hand over the microphone and, and Bridget, you can tell us what your item is. Okay, okay. So I love tropical fruit with tahini. So... Now, I have a high threshold for spice. Let's see how you do with it. Are you ready? You ready to try this? We're gonna so you have to sprinkle it because I could get the quantity all wrong, which would be quite dangerous. Okay. I mean, is that the normal amount that you would go for? Okay, let's just, let's do what you would do. Let's, let's do what you sure about this? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. All right. Keep sprinkling. I'm scared for you because I'm okay with this. Okay, all right. I, I do have a glass of water off camera just in case this goes really wrong. Okay, you first. Okay. I mean, I love this. Eating on, eating on camera is not my thing. But... <laughs> okay. Is it good? Is it good? Okay, I'm actually going to take the one that's kind of a little light on the sprinkles. Mm. Mm. So tell us, why did you choose this item? Okay, so I love vacationing where there's water. And this makes me always think about vacationing somewhere tropical, somewhere on a beach. So when I'm at home, have some pineapple, some watermelon, some mango, put some tahini on it. I can get right back, transform myself right back to vacation. What do you think? I thought it was delicious, and I'd like it to try it maybe on a margarita. Or a Bloody Mary. Okay. So we're gonna, that's okay. okay, so anyway, let's now talk about sustainability. That's why we're here. Um, love to know more about your role at Genesis and the journey that the company has been on for the last three years. Absolutely. I joined Genesis in December of 2020, and we were doing things that most companies would do, even if they did not have a program. But I will say this, coming to Genesis with a kind of somewhat of a clean slate um, and building a program from scratch might seem daunting to some, but it was a love for me. One, because I had the absolute support of our CEO, Tony Bates, and our chief strategy officer, Peter Graff. Having that executive support and to be able to build out a program that was intentional and built on empathy was such a blessing for me. And we have had significant strides over the past two and a half years of just bringing our program together. We put our goals together. We have our commitments. We have our pillars and we are showing progress. So we're not just saying that we're doing the work, but we're measuring our progress on that work year after year after year. So in our report this year, you'll see year after year improvements and reductions in emissions. You'll see improvements in our diversity and equity inclusion and how we're having growth. And you'll also see how we continue to give back into all the communities. And it's not just my team, right? It's a cross-functional interactive approach of ensuring that this is just an organic extension of who we are at Genesis and sustainability is one of our business KPIs, right? So everybody in the organization is responsible for being sustainable and driving sustainability. And that's for me, what I love about how we do it at Genesis. It sets us apart. So I think one thing that, it, you know, a position that Genesis is really privileged in is not just that we're driving sustainability, um, our goal to be carbon neutral by 2030, but also that our product enables other organizations to accelerate their own journey towards sustainability. Absolutely. So one of the things we know is we are 
laser focused on moving our customers to the cloud. So our sustainability strategy is absolutely in alignment with our business strategy because we know that once customers do that migration, they're reducing their carbon footprint by over 80%. And Tony talked about it a lot in his keynote on Tuesday as it is part of our business imperative to do that because sustainability helps us win when we move customers to the cloud. You know, when we think about our partnership with AWS, over 50% of our regions already are being powered by 95% renewable energy. And their renewable energy and their emission targets are in alignment with ours. So our carbon neutral strategy, we know that we're, we're going to exceed it and probably get there before 2030. We've also set our science-based target commitments for 2040 to be net zero. So we are laser focused on moving our customers and helping them to be more efficient. Their scope two gets reduced when they move to the cloud. It helps us with our scope three emissions. But then we also have ways when we look at like our pointless journey and how it helps our customers. We know that there's some industries that have um, dispatch calls. They call them truck rolls. It costs anywhere between $150 to $300 anytime a technician goes to a home. But through pointless and through our AI powered technology, they can reduce those calls because our technology is helping them to be more efficient and more effective. And that's so they're they're saving money and they're reducing their emissions because the truck rolls have been estimated to be almost 50% of a company's scope one emissions. And if our technology can help reduce that, then it's a win-win situation. So we're helping our customers you know, meet their own goals around carbon neutrality or net zero while we also are meeting our goals and staying committed to being carbon neutral and to get to net zero. I, I love that example, not just how they lower their carbon footprint by moving to cloud, but also in better understanding their journeys, what's driving the traffic, eliminating redundancy, they're able to become, you know, to lower their carbon footprint. Um, environmental sustainability is just one, uh, one area or one component um, of being a good corporate citizen. Um, the other area that we focus on very heavily uh, at, at Genesis is around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, would you share with us what progress we've made in that area? Oh, would love to. Uh, so I partner very closely with our chief diversity officer, which is Eric Thomas, and he has created a program over the past three years that has garnered us amazing progress when we think about diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have seen representation among women increase year on year, in our report, we, t we, we show it at over 29%, but just in this Q1, we have hit over 30% of women within our workforce here at Genesis, which is a huge in feat, especially in tech. We've had double digit increase across every ethnic group um, that we track here at Genesis year over year over the past three years. We've doubled the percentage of black leaders and for us leaders are director and above um, within the company. And we also do something called an inclusion score. And we, um, our employee inclusion score was an 84, which is a high score. Um, and what it tells us, it, it gives us an understanding of how our employees are feeling. It tells us if they feel like they can be their authentic selves at work. And the inclusion score also says that our employees are feeling like they have fair and equitable access to growth and development. And that is a huge thing that helps us with um, our retention. It reduces attrition and it also helps us when we go out to look for new talent. But it, it tells us that we are a destination of source for where people of color, women want to come and work for Genesis because we are committed and devoted to increasing um, representation around our company. So um, hats off to Eric and his whole team. They do an amazing job globally driving our inclusion groups, driving representation, look, looking at women and making sure underrepresented groups feel valued here at Genesis. Yeah, and then that really comes across uh, like at this event. You really feel that women, um, one of the, the, um, the initiatives I wanted to ask you about is girls. Um, Around us today, what's happening? Well, we do have a give back program happening. So yesterday, I'm the executive sponsor for our Genesis Women of Color, myself and our executive sponsor, um, Amy, for um, Genesis Women in Technology. We held a program yesterday with Girls Inc. and the Denver Professional National Society of Blind Engineers. And we were asked, to, we were able to not only do a panel with them yesterday and to talk about how uh, representation within STEM, it helps to increase workforces and to help improve society. But what we also did, we were able to give back 
back to both of those programs. And so happening here yesterday and today, we have had both of those organizations were doing a backpack giving program. So we are packing over 300 backpacks for kids within the Denver community, and we're excited to give back. Yeah, that's really wonderful. Okay, uh, a big, big topic of this conference is around AI. We've been learning about how Genesis Cloud is an AI-powered orchestration platform. Uh, huge theme here, experience, huge topic for us as an organization. Um, but tying back to Tony's keynote uh, yesterday morning, there's a tension, right? A responsibility to make sure that we're using AI ethically, responsibly, and that's really integrated into the core of everything that we do. We'd love to hear how we're focusing on that from an ethics and responsibility perspective. Absolutely. So we have been focused on AI and ethics for quite a while. Actually, over five years ago, we started our AI, uh, AI and ethics program. So when we talk about AI, we talk about how empathy through ethical AI is empowered here at Genesis. We're committed to practices that, you know, are leveraging how we use our AI, how we build it and how we apply it. So we built uh, last year, we developed our AI and ethics roundtable and through our roundtable, um, we have four different principles, which you can find in our report and on our website. And those four principles are focused on how do we balance value creation through empathy, because that's core to who we are at Genesis. How do we incorporate privacy in our design? How do we ensure that we can not only understand, but reduce bias that might exist within AI? And then always, how can we be more transparent? So we published the, um, the Genesis Sustainability Report. It's looking at last year, so it's the 2022 report. Uh, we published it yesterday. We're all incredibly proud um, of what the company's achieved and everything that we're driving. Um, I'd just love to hear from you, like what are some of your personal highlights? What are you most proud of um, over the past uh, 12 months? Ah, God, where do I start? There's so many things. When we talk about our carbon emissions, year on year, we've had reductions. Our diversity, year on year, we've had an increase. Our, the way we give back, I love the way our report actually shows how we show up in the communities where we work and serve. We recognize that our license to operate is earned and we continue to prove ourselves year after year. The, you know, we've received external recognition for all the great work that also was released yesterday, being awarded, you know, Contact Center Sustainability Company of the Year for North America. And then, you know, we get to continue to commit to our commitment around reducing our footprint, even this event, right? You know, to over 2,000 people here. And we knew that we needed to figure out how we were going to green such an event, working with the Gaylord to make sure that we could look at how their operations, um, how their HVAC, watering, irrigation, recycling within this, um, you know, within the space that we're operating in. And in addition to that, we wanted to offset this complete event. And so because of that, we have partnered with Rubicon Carbon, which is our offset partner, and our carbon benefits from this experience event alone will promote biodiversity through investments in nine nature-based projects in Malawi that help avoid deforestation and degradation while contributing to community reskilling and to protecting animals. So I'm excited that we continue to sow back into the communities where we work and serve. So yes, this report, our FY23, says all the fantastic things that we did last year but we never stop working to be as sustainable as we possibly be. And we are always on the journey and it shows that even here right now where we are down showing our commitment. You, you can find sustainability everywhere. Um, we have ways that you could opt out of swag or have green travel tips. So I just love the fact that everything that you see and read in our report, we live out every single day. Yeah, it's really authentic. And uh, I think just one of the things that really strikes me in our approach to sustainability is it's not just lip service. We're very, very numbers driven in the way that we drive sustainability. So huge kudos to your team, Bridget. Uh, really like, amazing report, amazing results. And thank you so much for joining us on The Green Room. It's been fantastic having you. And I look forward to uh, enjoying more of the Tajine later. Thanks very much for joining us, everyone. And see you again next time.